Hello, my name is Jerry Leahy. I'm with the Department of Municipal Affairs and Environment. We're here today to discuss water distribution system flushing. Water distribution system flushing is an important activity that should be a regular part of every drinking water system's maintenance program. Flushing water through the distribution system at an increased velocity can remove sediments and biofilms that have built up in distribution mains, and it can also improve water quality. It is recommended that a water distribution system be flushed on a yearly basis at a minimum or more frequently if conditions warrant. Flushing should be undertaken during periods of low demand on the water system. There are two types of flushing, conventional and unidirectional. Conventional flushing involves simply opening fire hydrants in the system to move a greater volume of water to hydraulically remove sediment built up in the pipes. Unidirectional flushing is a method of flushing where the operator controls the direction of flow in the system through the opening and closing of system valves to ensure all sections of the system are being flushed and optimal flows and velocities are achieved throughout the flushing process. By closing valves in a predetermined sequence, the operator may be able to increase pressure in the line and achieve appropriate velocity to ensure pipe walls are scoured and sediment is removed. One of the most important items to consider when flushing a distribution system is maintaining continuous positive water pressure in the system. When the velocity of the water increases, there will be a decrease in the pressure in the pipe. This is due to the conversion of pressure energy to kinetic energy in the increased velocity. The minimum water pressure that should be maintained at all times in the distribution system is 20 pounds per square inch, or 140 kilopascals when measuring in metric. This positive pressure prevents any potential contaminants from entering the distribution system during flushing or compromising the integrity of the infrastructure. Operators should monitor system pressure during flushing to ensure they are maintaining continuous positive pressure and not creating a vacuum in the distribution system. By monitoring pressure during flushing, operators can determine if the flushing is creating a significant drop in system pressure. Every distribution system has a hydraulic grade line and one of the keys to successful flushing is to keep the hydraulic grade line above the highest user. The hydraulic grade line can show the pressure and potential pressure loss in the pipes throughout the system. The hydraulic grade line always slopes downward in the direction of water flow. It can be shown on a drawing as a line measured in height of water. If a water surface is located higher than the hydraulic grade line, there will be a vacuum or a suction on that line. This can potentially draw in contaminants into the pipe or collapse the line. This can happen easily at high points in the system. For this reason, it is important to maintain continuous positive pressure. If the distribution system has high points, it is very important to monitor the line pressure at those high points to make sure the hydraulic grade line, which represents pressure in the system, does not drop below a user service line. When a system is flushed, the velocity in the pipes increases, which will decrease the amount of pressure. Operators need to monitor pressure while flushing to make sure they do not create a vacuum in the system. The other important thing to note during flushing is the velocity of water moving through the pipes. Ideally, an operator would want to achieve a water velocity of 1.5 meters per second to ensure the inside walls of the pipe are sufficiently cleaned. Solids begin to settle out of water when velocity slows to lower than 0.75 meters per second. Therefore, operators will have to generate a velocity of greater than 0.75 meters per second to achieve efficient flushing. When flushing a distribution system, best practice is to start at the source and flush towards the ends of the distribution system. Conventional flushing simply involves opening hydrants and or flush valves in no particular order, removing stagnant water from the system. When utilizing unidirectional flushing, the idea is to use the system valves to help control flow and pressure and flush each section of the system from the source to the ends with clean water. Operators should develop their plan for flushing in advance. The plan should start with numbering all isolation valves and hydrants in the distribution system. The next step is to divide your distribution system into smaller sections and identify which valves will need to be opened and closed to isolate each section. You will start with the section closest to the source water. Once you have flushed the first section of your distribution system, Continue through the system until you reach the end of the line. This will allow dirty water to be moved through the distribution system and ultimately discharged through a hydrant. Always verify that any valves that were closed during flushing are open before moving on to the next section. It is very useful to have all hydrants and valves in the system assigned a number on a large map. Use this map to develop the plan as it is easier to visualize the whole system.
Measuring pressure and flow while flushing the water distribution system allows operators to monitor their flushing and make sure they do not operate the system in a way that can damage the system or dry in contaminants. Monitoring will also allow the operator to verify that a desirable flushing velocity has been achieved while maintaining sufficient positive pressure in the system. Often in order to maintain pressure or create an adequate flushing velocity, operators will have to close valves in the system to direct flow towards the section of system being flushed. In grid and loop systems, it is easier to do this without disrupting water service to customers. Today I will demonstrate a method of monitoring system pressure as well as determining velocity of the water simultaneously. This device is made up of a few easy to find parts and can be made relatively quickly. It can be used for monitoring pressure during flushing and it doubles as a sample tap for measuring chlorine residuals during flushing. It fits on the fire hydrant nozzle and has two pressure gauges and a small ball valve. The second pressure gauge is simply there for redundancy to verify the device is measuring accurately. Attach the device to the hydrant nozzle Close the ball valves to each pressure gauge. This will reduce the chance of getting dirt in the pressure gauges when the hydrant is opened. Slowly open the hydrant using an operating nut, allowing flow through the other side of the nozzle. Flush water through the device through the open end. When the hydrant is first opened, it will discharge some colored water from the service lateral line. After a short duration, the water should clear. Open the two valves to allow flow into the pressure gauges and close the valve on the end. Both pressure gauges should read the same. The gauge pressure should closely reflect water line pressure at that point in the system. Using a device like this, operators can monitor line pressure while they flush the system. Using the pressure reading at the flowing hydrant also allows operators to determine the velocity of the water moving through the pipe. Use the pressure reading to determine the volume of water being flushed then use the volume to determine the velocity in the pipe. We should be doing this while we are flushing every section of line. Generally, operators will look for three complete changes of water in the section being flushed. As an example, if the section of pipe being flushed holds 5,000 liters of water, an operator will require 15,000 liters of water to get that section flushed. Operators can do some simple math calculations to determine the volumes of each section being flushed. Remember that the goal of flushing a distribution system is to achieve sufficient water velocity to scour the inside pipe walls while maintaining pressure in the system. Monitoring while you are flushing is the key to determining if you are meeting that goal. You may need multiple operators to monitor at different locations in the distribution system during flushing. Operators should inform residents and users of flushing in advance and urge users to limit water use during the flushing period. This will minimize the chance of dirt getting into service lines. If service lines do become dirty, ask residents to remove any screens from their taps and flush the service line until the water clears. Before beginning a flushing program, operators should make sure they have and use the proper personal protective equipment such as work boots, hard hats, safety glasses, reflective clothing, gloves, and anything else that their personal safety plan would require. It is very important to implement a traffic plan when working on or around roadways. Often fire hydrants used for flushing are placed for easy roadside access for firefighting. This can put the operators using these hydrants for flushing into busy roadways. Design a traffic control plan to be used in coordination with the flushing plan. The traffic control plan should include an advance warning area, a transition area leading up to the work area, and a termination area that allows restricted traffic to return to normal flow. When the system is being flushed, biofilm and sediment is being removed from the pipe walls. This will increase the chlorine demand of the system during flushing. Operators must be vigilant about maintaining sufficient chlorine residuals in the system. 
it is good practice to increase the amount of secondary disinfectant being added to the system to combat the increased demand created by flushing. Regular residual testing should be conducted throughout the flushing process to verify sufficient residuals are being maintained. If residuals or sufficient positive pressure in the system cannot be maintained, then a boil water advisory should be put in place until the flushing is complete and bacteriological testing yielding satisfactory results has been completed. It should be recognized that not all water systems have the hydraulic capacity to be flushed due to supply issues or small pipe diameters. A system's capacity to flush can be determined by the operators by using the methods discussed in this video. When flushing the system, large volumes of water are being discharged, so there is the chance that this water could damage private property. There are devices available to help control the flow of water used during flushing. Hydrant diffusers slow the water flow down and can redirect the water if necessary. Often, something simple as a tarp or a sheet of plywood laid down into the flow of water to absorb or deflect the force of the water can be enough to prevent erosion of soil due to the flushing. Operators should always be cautious when discharging water onto private property. If you have any further questions regarding flushing, contact the regional operator trainer in your area. For more information related to flushing or the operation of your drinking water system, please visit the Department of Municipal Affairs and Environment's website.